The Voice of Sega with Dr. Scott Nick. And welcome back to The Voice of Sega here on Radio Sega. I have with me the one, the only, Mr. Johnny Giorelli. How are you doing, good sir? I'm great, I'm great, mate. I'm great. Feeling good. <laughs> Glad to be with you. Uh, what we just had there was uh, from Crush 40, Watch Me Fly. And then after that, we had uh, from Hardline, it was before this. But a little trivia for you there. Uh, June Sonoy, uh had his own little solo in this uh, in this song. How did that come about? Oh well, you know, June is my is like my brother, and um, I just thought that that song fit his style, and asked him if he would join me on it. You know, we uh, musicians we always like to play on each other's records and things like that. And um, June was a massive Hardline fan. I mean, that's how he learned of me to bring me into the Crush Forty. Uh, world and the Sega gaming world, and um, he contacted me through uh, through a buddy of mine who was the guitar player for White Snake, and that's how we all <laughs> that's how we got together. It was pretty interesting, but um, yeah, yeah. June, I I just thought that song fit him stylistically, and he wanted a solo, and we did it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so I have a few questions uh, for you now. Are you you ready for this? Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course I'm ready, man. Of course. I have I've written these down, so if it sounds like I'm just reading off a script, it's because I am. Okay, so here we oh, go. That's fair. that's fair. So you've been singing for many many years, uh, double my lifetime probably. Yes. Uh, I'm I'm quite young. I was I was gonna write in the uh, in the script. Wow, you must be old. But I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna say that. No, I am old, man. <laughs> I am. I t- I turn 24 next year. I'm old. Just Damn. kidding. I'm not, even, um, I'm not even telling you how old I am. Uh, 48, is it? Oh, you had to say that, Scott. No, I'm joking. 20, 30, to... 32. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. We'll go with 32. So, who was it that inspired you to to sing, and how did this passion first become a career for you? That's a great question. Um, I didn't know that I could sing. Honest to God, I did not know. Before music, so I've been a professional, I have to back up a little bit. I've been a real professional musician since I was 11 years old. So I've been touring the East Coast of the United States, the West Coast, as a little punk. And prior to that, um, I started playing music around eight years old, but I was involved in theater. I really loved the theater. I loved acting and, and doing musicals and things like that. I worked with a lot of off-Broadway shows and and, um, and I had a musical director. This guy, his first name was Bruce. I don't remember his last name. And he was responsible for teaching me how to open my mouth. A lot of us can sing. Singing is just um, an extension of talking and um, and then it gets into pitch and things like that of course but really it's just an extension of talking you know he's just that's really what singing is but this man through theater brought open my mouth and as a lot of you guys know I'm very loud and um, so he was responsible for teaching me how to open that mouth and then the rest was a gift you know a, a god-given gift and i never had lessons or anything like that it just sort of it just comes naturally um to me hmm, okay so your first big band was a uh, brunette correct yeah that was funny so the uh brunette was my first act yes we uh that started on the east coast and then when i was 18 years old we jumped into this old beat up old tour bus. I don't know how we made it across the United States, but we drove across the U.S. and um, started our, you know, career in California and tried to get noticed. and And it happened pretty quickly for that band. We were one of the top drawing acts um, in in Hollywood. We broke every record. We broke like the Doors record, Van Halen's record. That band used to sell out clubs on the sunset strip in like 15 minutes Damn. it was insanity yes now these clubs only held four people no i'm just kidding I mean, that's a joke bad joke no but uh we do we, we that band held all these these records but never got a record deal it was the weirdest weirdest thing it's just because the songs were not ready 
you know, uh, it's all about songs, and we, we weren't ready. But yes, that was my my first big uh, big big group on the West Coast. Wow. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, Crush Forty started off as Sons of Angels back in 1998. Is that when it all started for you? Yes, that's exactly right. That's how exactly did the right. um, How did the name of that come about? That was actually uh, June's choice. Um, I, and I really don't know to this day, I really should ask him, but I really don't know why that name. I can mm. tell you about Crush 40, but I really don't know why Sons of Angels. And then what happened was there was a, another group and they made us give up the name. And June called me, I'll never forget it. I was in California and he called me um, from Japan. He said, we, we have to change the name and what do you want to do? And I said, Phew, man. So now we're going back 16 years, and you, so you can do the math. I'm 48 now. Gosh, I'm old. But um, so um, I said, hey, man, I'm never turning 40 years old ever. I would like to crush 40. And he goes, I love it. I love it. I love it. And that's, that's the birth of that name. It was just me not wanting to turn 40 years old. So now I think we're going to have to change it to crush 50. And because uh, I'm not going 50, man, I'm not going there. Forget it. No way. I have Mid-life too much crisis. energy. Yeah, I'm not going there, man. Too much energy. I'm not going 50. Exactly. But anyway, and, uh, that's 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 what happened. June is a big fan of the drink Crush as well, isn't he? Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, he really is. Yep. Orange Crush. Yep. Um. So all your three different bands, Hardline, Axe, Woody Pearl, and Crush 40, have like very different styles um, to them. How does the creative process differ from each band? Great question. So Hardline was obviously my baby. And if anyone's wondering what my solo album would sound most like, it would have to be more like Hardline than anything else I do. Only because, you know, I wrote that Hardline record with with Neil and, um, and with my brother as well. That's really who I am, that melodic, big power, you know, ballads, you know, similar to like Watch Me Fly, you know, that kind of, I, that kind of message and, you know, that's me. Um, so, so that was, you know, that was hard line and Axel Rudy Pell, that Axel Rudy Pell takes me back to my younger, younger, younger days, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old when I was singing you know, really heavy stuff. I don't know. I don't know why, but I was really, I mean, I know why it's fun to sing, but I was into it. I was into that aggressive kind of metal stuff when I was a kid and I blew up stuff around the house. My poor mom uh, and dad. Yeah. I was like blowing stuff up and making fog in the house and setting things on fire. So it looks, I'm not recommending anyone do that. It's very dangerous, but yeah, I like I, we accidentally set my drums on fire and almost burned the whole house down but um yeah so that you know axel rudy pal takes me back that's why i love it so much it takes me back to a time period that was very i was young i was you know learning more about music and and uh i knew it was, what's really interesting for me um i was very very fortunate very blessed is i knew exactly what i wanted to do at 11 years old and I and I did I mean I started playing at eight years old and focused on it that's all I lived and and breathed was was music that was it so really fortunate and and you know my friends were playing with Tonka toys and you know playing in the sandbox I was in my basement recording studio and I was working on on songs but uh, anyway back to Axel so yeah Axel brings me back to a time period that's really fun um, for me and then crush 40 of course is a way to to express myself it kind of ties in if you think about this it ties into my theater days because i'm presented from sega i'm presented um with a scene and i get to be as creative as i want to be for that scene so even though it's you know uh, a game it still has meaning it has purpose it has you know a, a plot to it and i get to watch that scene before you guys do and and get creative um you know making music behind that scene and trying to pull the best out of it and that is 
fun, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it is fun. And they also, um, I get, um, you know, drawings. I get some of the initial drawings and to help me uh, bring out some of the, the, the creative uh, juices and get them flowing to, to write the songs for the games. So that's, it's just fun, man. I mean, how, I mean, what isn't fun about gaming? How could you, you know, how could you, oh man, I got to write a song. I got to write a song for Sega. This stinks. Are you kidding? It's so much fun. So that's why I do it. And that's why I have been doing it, um, you know, for 16 years. And the fans are off the charts. Now, look, I sold a lot of records, Hardline, Axel Rudy Pell. I have over 30 albums out. People don't realize how many albums I have out. I call, I still call them albums. I think that's a dead giveaway for how old I am. CDs. I have over 30 different CDs out. Damn. And the best fans I have and the most loyal and the most loving and dedicated and happy are the Crush 40 fans. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, that is the honest to God truth. Every show when June and I do a, sh a Crush 40 show, the places are packed. The kids are, are just yeah, everyone out of their minds excited and um so i'm not saying that's my favorite um you know band but i might be so um continuing on that how is it like performing live for crush 40 how's that different from the other bands is there like different sort of energy for you it is um it's um you know, it's, we do it two different ways um, for, for those that have seen the Crush 40 shows. Sometimes June and I play with backing tracks. He's always playing live and I'm always singing live, of course. But the band isn't there, you mm. know, our backing band. And that's a little more difficult um, because, you know, as musicians, we feed off of each other as we're playing, you know, and every night is different. You know, it's it's even though you're playing what the same thing, it's you know every room is different the sound is always a little different and everyone's personality and attitude and the way they're playing is different it's exciting playing to backing tracks is a little bit more difficult um but um i um i, I don't know man i just the difference is it's way more upbeat happy yeah. fun you know it's like it's like I'm up there playing a game. You know what I mean? It's like I'm the game. You know? It's yeah. cool. I love it. I can't wait to put We need to play more. I hope so too. Because uh, you, you played in uh, England for uh, Sonic... What is it called again? Summer of Sonic. There we go. You've Summer done Sonic. America, yep. Sonic Boom, and then you do live shows with the whole band in Tokyo. Got any plans yes. of going elsewhere? Um, we're, what we're doing, June and I are getting together here shortly, um, have a, a little Skype meeting and we are planning out the rest of 2016 and 2017. Um, I, I can't commit to any shows right now. Um, but do we want to do them? Yes, absolutely. Will we be playing some shows? I'm sure mm. because it's just cause that's what we do. Um, but as soon as we know if there's an event or something we're going to participate in, you guys will know immediately. Awesome. Uh, so completely uh, different topic from this. Uh, you've created quite a few uh, music videos in uh, your career from uh, Axel Rudy Pell's Hallelujah, which is probably one of my favorite uh, music videos of yours. And then there oh, was uh, Fever Dreams, uh, a lot of toilet yep. paper involved in that one. Um, yes, we did, not have to, we did not have to worry about running out of toilet paper. How, no problem at all. How do you find the music video creation process? And would you ever want to create a music video for Crush Faulty? Yes, and that's you know it's something that we've we've talked about uh, also, and we'll be talking about too uh, in the future. the The video process, making a video, is fun. It's a lot of work. People don't realize that is a mm. very long sixteen to eighteen hour day. Um, <laughs> lots of lights, lots of cameras, lots of angles, um, but it's fun because it's a way where you know you're listening to playback. So you're listening to yourself and you're singing along with yourself and it's, I don't know, it's just cool. It's just a way to, you know, express yourself with your body and, 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 uh, you know, and, and capture it on, on film. It's cool. I like it. I like it. When we did the hallelujah video for Axel Rudy Pell. So if, if you guys haven't seen that, 
check that out. Just uh, check that out on YouTube. It's pretty cool. Just put in Axel Rudy Pell, Hallelujah. It'll pop right up. And there's like, I don't know, four or five million hits on that song. But that was done in a, in a, a live, in a real church. Um, and the lights that are on that video, uh, in that video, are part of the church. It's a re- it was a really cool, progressive kind of church and so i like going to these different locations and with axel we've gone to some castles and done some cool stuff so making videos is always really uh exciting for me i love it yeah um so your longest running band hardline has gone through many members over the years uh does it does it still feel like hardline to you and what is it like working with your current members in comparison to back in the double eclipse days well, you know, good question also, man. Um, I love the, the current lineup and um, I lo- love these guys. They're, they're my family. Um, but, you know, there's there's Hardline, the band with Neil Sean, Dean Castronovo, Todd Jensen, my brother, myself. That was a very powerful band. And it was the band. It was what it was all created with. So it's never quite the same um, but, um, but the current lineup with Alessandro and Anna and Chesco has its own, um, greatness to it. You know, it has its own feel, um, but it will never be like the original band it could, because it's not, you know, they're different people, different players, different styles. We try to maintain the, you know, the, you know, sort of similar, um, you know, a uh, style, uh, of the original and always everyone always compares to the first album double eclipse everyone always says oh well, it doesn't quite sound like double eclipse or wow that one sounds like double eclipse clips and that so it's always being compared to that album number one it's just kind of what happens but yeah i love the new guys and um i just spoke to neil neil sean from journey uh not too long ago via text and um you know about doing something in the future together but uh well you never know what can happen you never know. um so you've yep. collaborated with quite a few artists throughout the years for example uh cash cash with the uh, sonic boom uh, song yep. and they're now like really big like in australia i hear them like i was walking in the supermarket the other day and one of their songs was playing yeah they're great guys man oh my god they're so great I enjoyed playing with them. We did uh, did something together in, um, I believe it was San Diego, where we yeah, Sonic jammed. Boom. Yeah, yeah, San Diego. And sorry, guys, because I mean, I've I've been to every city in the world like 15 different times. But um, yeah, they're great guys. I'm so happy for them. They're great musicians. They're 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 serious guys, but a lot of fun. And, yeah. And best of luck to them. And you've also worked with like a band Wolfpack, for example. What is it like working with these different bands, and what's it like working with their different uh, music styles? I think it's cool, you know. Back when I started performing, when I was a young little guy, I didn't want to listen to anyone because I didn't want to be influenced. I never really had a CD or back then a record collection because I didn't want anyone to say, "Hey, you Johnny sounds like this guy. Johnny sounds like that guy." I didn't want to be anyone, but but myself and I, I think I I don't think I sound like anyone do I Scott I uh, my, like my dad know? says sometimes you sound like Bon Jovi you know what that I get a lot and I swear I've never owned a Bon Jovi record in my life I swear to you but I do get that once in a while but I I, I like my hallelujah version a lot better but don't tell anybody Scott but I, I like mine better but um yeah, no, it's it's cool working with now that I am. Um, I'm not gonna say old, more mature. I I like collaborating with other artists. It's cool, man, to bring out the talents of as many people as you can to make this creation is cool. It's fun. It's very, very, very um, rewarding to have like a whole bunch of talent in one room and guys sitting around with instruments and you're like check this out and then got and then i sing you know sing on top of something and you just start creating and picture that versus myself sitting in a room which i used to do man i'm staring at an empty page just like the song in the hands of time from hardline staring at an empty page will it come to me will it come to me that song was about 
being alone with an empty page and having to fill it with words that have meaning and expression and creativity, mm -hmm. um, it's hard to do, man. It's hard to do. So when you collaborate with a whole bunch of talented guys, oh, man, it's fun. It's fun. So I welcome any opportunity to uh, work with other musicians. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, fun fact for you, my favorite drummer is uh, Mr. Mike Tirana. If you don't know, <laughs> he uh, used Mikey. to he used to be the drummer for uh, Axel Rudy Pell, but unfortunately he uh, left a few years ago. Can you recall any standout memories with him? Oh, every day with Mike Tirana was a standout memory, believe me. He is the most energy now okay so mikey's in his 50s and this guy has more energy than half of the crush 40 fans and myself all tied together pulling on a rope this guy is strong powerful amazing drummer um incredibly funny if mm. you got you gotta you gotta you guys gotta google some mike tarana stuff and watch some of his youtube videos where he plays different characters he has his he, he has a fake brother named Bob, Bob Tarana, who's his <laughs> yeah. manager. I mean, okay, so you could imagine we had a lot of fun mm. on the road. A lot. A lot. He's crazy. He's completely crazy, and I love it. Yeah, I was watching uh, one of your old um, behind-the-scenes Axe Ready Pell DVDs, and uh, you, and, you and Mike are just hilarious. Oh, we have so much fun. Sometimes we laugh so hard. You know, just telling jokes to each other on the tour bus that we're we're crying and doubled over, falling on the floor in pain. We have we have a lot of fun. I miss Mike Ela. I, I actually spoke to Mikey uh, this morning just through oh, Skype. We lovely. stay in touch. He's one of my best best buds. And what a great drummer, right? Yeah, amazing. Um, so oh. last question for you now at the moment yeah. is, uh, yeah. you are also a pilot. If you guys didn't know, how did uh, how long have you been flying for, and how did this all come about? Wow, good, great question. A lot of people don't know this, but yes, I am a airplane fanatic. Um, I've been a pilot for a long time. My brother Joe actually uh, got me interested. He was a pilot also, people don't know this, at the age of, I think, 16. And then flew for a while. And then when my daughter, my daughter was born, can't believe it's 19 years ago, I got the bug to fly. I don't know if it's because I had a girl and it's like, I can't deal with a girl. I'm going to have to fly away. No, I, I just had the bug to fly. I cannot explain it. And to this day, I absolutely am nuts about aviation. And my son, Brandon, knows how to fly. We had uh, an airplane. I actually just sold my airplane. But our most favorite thing to do, Brandon, my son, Brandon, and I, is we fly animals for uh, rescue. So we transport as many dogs um, as we possibly can. We pull them out of kill shelters and we deliver them to adoption agencies and to forever homes. And and we love it, man. We fill our airplane filled with, with beautiful dogs and save their lives. And that's wow. the real love for me when, when flying is, uh, and we, you know, I, I love it. So yes, I fly single engine airplanes. I can fly twins. I don't fly jets. Um, someday, but uh, for right now, I fly propeller airplanes and and love it. Have to play uh, Watch Me Fly next time you're in the air. Uh... Yes, <laughs> you must see. You knew there was more to that song, right, Scott? Exactly. You knew it. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're gonna go into some more music, and then we'll be back to um to answer some of the fan questions. We're gonna overrun a little bit. I hope that is not too bad for you, Johnny. No, man. I've got I've got all night. As a matter of fact, I think we should just talk all night, Scott. I, I have no objection to that. <laughs> so we'll we'll for at up... least another 15, 20 minutes, right? Exactly. Um, okay. What we got coming up next is one of my favorite Axel Rudy Pell songs. It is uh, from the 2013 album, I believe. I hope. Uh, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Yes. It is Run With The Wind. Enjoy. <laughs> 